Hello and welcome to the Air Sky Boat setup guide for installing a local server for development on the Air Sky Boat repository. I'm Critical and I'm going to go over this step by step and hopefully by the end of this you'll have a working and functional local server to launch and test your code or figure out bugs or anything that you need to use it for. As you see in front of you here, I have the guide for the Land Sand Boat install. The install for the ASB guide is almost identical to this, but there will be some a tiny difference here and there. As you see, the first few steps are going to have you install a few things on your computer. And I can go through each of these right here really quick. So the first one we're going to have is Git for Windows. This one is just default options. You don't have to do anything special throughout the process of installation. The next one is Install Visual Studio. So when you install Visual Studio, you'll have a prompt for different extensions that you could install alongside Visual Studio. And you will have to make sure you choose the desktop development with C++ as it mentions here. Next on the list is MariaDB. On this one, you'll have to make sure you choose an older version as that's what's compatible with the Landsend Boat repository. And that's going to be this 10.6.14 version that you see available here. You'll just select that version, click download and install that. There will be an option throughout that that you have to make sure though that you set a password and note that password down somewhere as you want to make sure to remember that for a later step in this install process. And the last one you'll have to do is the Python install. One thing to make sure here too when you have the install window appear is that at the very bottom of the window you'll have an option to choose add Python exe to path. Make sure to have that checked. Now the next step in this process is going to be making a fork of the AirSkyBoat repo. And you'll do that by going to the main AirSkyBoat repo page on the GitHub website. And on the top right here, you'll see a fork option. If you click the down arrow next to it, you'll see that you can do create a new fork. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that since I already have one made, but all you would need to do is click on this and keep the name, choose yourself on the list here and click create fork. Once your fork is created, you can go to the front page of it and you'll come here to this green code button. You want to take a copy of this URL that appears here. And we're going to go to on your local computer, wherever you'd like to store this repository. As you can see, I'm in my development folder here and I already have the AirSkyBoat repo installed. But just for demonstration, if you have installed Git for Windows, you should be able to come into your options and do Git GUI, Git Bash here rather actually. And that'll open up a terminal to run some commands in. And this is where we will use the URL I had you copy a bit ago. So in this window, actually let me make it a little bit bigger for you guys. We're gonna type in git clone dash dash recursive. And then you paste in the URL that you copied. Once you hit enter, it'll go through a process of downloading and creating the local repository on your computer. It may take a few minutes, depending on your internet connection. And once that's done, you should find a, a folder like this created where you chose to download this into. So with that done, now we're going to come in here and we're going to go into the tools folder. If you do shift right click, you should be able to choose open PowerShell window here. And this is where we're going to come back to the land sand boat guide and we, we can copy a line here that we'll have to make a small adjustment to. Going back to that PowerShell window we opened, we'll paste in the copy. And you can go ahead and erase this section here if you've made sure to open that up within the tools window. You can paste that in, hit enter, and it should go through the process of reading a file in here to install the requirements to run some tools to get your server set up. Then the next step here is to go back to the folder that you had and go back to the main AirSkyBoat folder. And then we're going to go into a settings folder. For you, there should be no files available to you within this. And if you go to the default file, you'll find six files in here. These files control your server. You can use these to set up lots of settings. Uh, the main file here is the main.lua that controls how you what, what expansions are available on your local server and many different settings. So I recommend going through these files in your own time and setting up your server how you want. But otherwise, all we need to do is copy all six of these and paste it into this main settings folder. After that, I uh, hope you took note of that uh, MariaDB password that you set. We're going to go into the network file within your main setting file 
And you see here we have the SQL password. You'll type it here. So all you need to do is whatever, blah, blah. And you save the file and it should be able to get connected. Just to make sure, I'm only opening it up in this as a default so you don't see my password, but you would be editing it in the file that you paste it into this main settings folder. Like I said, go through each of these in your own time, set up your server how you want it to be set up, and that should be good to go. Now, we're gonna come back to the tools folder that we were in before, and you should see this dbtool.py. We're gonna use this to set up your database for the very first time. So you're gonna open, open with Python if it doesn't default to it already. And for you on your end, this should ask you to prompt for the default path of where your MariaDB install is. So by default, typically that is going to be the, let me find it here really quick. It should prompt you that you, line that you can copy paste, but otherwise you can come to here. This is the default location for almost all of them. And you can copy this line and paste it into the window. When you hit enter, it will ask you if you'd like to initialize your database. You just can click yes and it will run through all of the SQL files and initialize your database for the very first time. Once the DB tool is done running and your database is up to date, then we are gonna open up Visual Studio for the first time. You come over here to the right and click open a new folder, and then you navigate to the local repository that you just created and open it up within the Air Sky Boat folder. Once yours loads up for the first time, it may take a few minutes for it to load. And down here in this terminal window that will appear here shortly, you will see some lines talking about uh, CMake generation. You wanna wait for a bit until you see the line saying CMake generation uh, finished. It may not show for me since I have already built my server. But once that's done, you see prompt CMake generation finish. You can come up to the top here and click build and build all. This will take a few minutes and you may feel your computer chug as it goes through the process of building your server for the first time. But once that's complete, you can come back to your main folder and at the bottom of the folder, you'll find some new files at the bottom here. These are what makes up your local test server. So once this step is done, you have got your server built and you, can, you should be able to run it. So just a quick explanation here as well. XI Connect is your login server. This is what allows people to log in and connect into your server. But the server itself is ran off of XI Map. This is what controls all of the monsters, all of the NPCs, anything to do with in-game is ran through XI Map. You should find though on the a lot of the private servers that are run with, with a decent sized player base, they will do something called instancing, or you may hear it incorrectly referred to as clustering. People will do clusters of different zones, and so they'll run like, for instance, like 20 different versions of this XI map, but it's set to specific zones that it, it tracks. Because otherwise, with the amount of people that you might have, if you have a larger server, it can cause this XI map to chug and and crash. Like, let's say a crash happens, it crashes the entire game rather than just, just the zone that it was in. Moving on from that, we're going to have XI Search here. XI Search controls all of the auction house. It search, controls parties. Uh, searching for people, anything to do with where you're searching for another user or any kind of search in game is going to utilize this. And then XR World is, is a more recent addition to the Land Sandboat repo. This one, the purpose of it is to slowly transition and it already does control a few of the systems within the game that are kind of on a global level rather than on an individual basis. So this would take, in for instance, the conquest system, which is currently in the process of being moved over to the XR world, this will take into all the messaging. This is something that happens that needs to happen once throughout the whole world at the same time. So this should hopefully, once the XR world gets built out and fleshed out, it should lead towards a healthier and uh, smoother running server rather than chugging it occasionally when it does a, a game wide check. So, but all you need to do is run all four of these. Every single one of them loads pretty quickly, except for XI Map does take some time. But that's it. That's the full process of setting up your local server. I will now move on into how to connect into your local server with using uh, your client. So the main thing you'll need to do first, if you haven't already, 
is coming back to land stand boat we can come back to the parent repo they have here and they have another repo here called xi loader and all of these links i'll have down in the description below for easy uh, access to find them but all you need to do is come over here to these releases and you will download this xiloader.exe. Now for as for the, the game client to connect into, if you do not have anything other than Horizon, that, sh that should be okay for right now. But in the long run, I recommend uh, getting retail installed. And we have a walkthrough that we'll have, if we don't have it already posted, we'll have it soon of the how to update your retail without needing an active retail sub but it, it is very nice if you can to support Square Enix since we are using their assets here so it would be recommended to install and have an active retail sub if you can it does help with getting captures too but for right now for this i will demonstrate using the horizon xi install since i assume that's the majority of where our interested developers are coming from so coming into the game here Mine's gonna look a little different than yours because I already have some files installed here. Uh, but you'll find here we have this Ashita CLI.exe. What you'll want to do is right click this, come down to show more options if you're on Windows 11, and click create shortcut. You want to come in here to this shortcut and right click it and go to properties. And at the end here, you want to do a space and you can type in local.ini. You can name this whatever you like. That's what I'm just choosing to name it here for this demonstration. And now we're going to come up to a, a folder up here to config, boot. And I have a lot more in here than you're going to have. But you should be able to find... They're probably going to be an Ashita and a Horizon XI.ini. So what you can do if you'd like, you can copy the Horizon XI.ini and paste it in here. And rename it to whatever you'd like. And so going into this file, we're going to open it up and scroll down to this Ashita.boot section. This is how you control where you're logging into. If it isn't already like this, I recommend changing this command line where it says dash dash server 127.0.0.1. You want to make sure that it says this so that it connects to your local server. The th this uh, All those windows that you just opened in the background. That makes sure you're connecting to that and not another private server. And if you'd like, you can save your information in here. Once you've created your account, you can do dash dash user and then your username, dash dash pass and your password. And once you've got your account created, you can save those here. Here, we're gonna change this to whatever it currently says and change this to xiloader.exe. And then you can save the file. And now we're gonna come back into this main game folder and move into this bootloader section. Uh, in here, you may only have this pol.exe or the horizon loader dash local, uh, but you'll now you'll want to t go to your downloads folder in another window and take that XI loader I had you download in the background here and move it into this folder. Now, if you've done all of that, as I showed, you should be able to come back down to the shortcut that you made earlier and open it up. I'm going to open up a different one just so I can demonstrate since that's not going to work for me. Coming down here and now you should be able to see this will pop up for you. Then you can go ahead and do two to create a new account, put in the information you'd like, and then you can log into your, your account for the first time. So once you've got the game opened up, you should be able to make a character as you normally would in Final Fantasy XI. Once your character is created, though, you can turn it into a GM by opening up your Heidi sequel for the first time. The, for you, for the first time, it'll do root. This part will be blank, so go ahead and plug in the password that you had written down earlier. And ensure that this says 127.0.0.1 to connect to your local database. You should be able to open it up. And let me see if I can zoom. Unfortunately, I can't zoom this in, but you should see on the left side here, there is a chars table. You should be able to open that up, click on the data tab, and the character you just made, its information should be showing here. I recommend coming all the way to the right. You'll find a column here named GM level, and you can set it to five for the maximum level of GM for your local. And then you should be good to go. You should be able to get logged in and do any testing or development as you need. And if you're interested, I will do one more step to show you how to get started with coding and a little brief overview of the repository. So if you don't already have a preferred 
uh, coding editor. Everyone on the Horizon team generally uses a program called Visual Studio Code. So you can just go to Google, type that in, Visual Studio, oh, can't type, Visual Studio Code, open that up and download it and install it. I'll go ahead and open up my local Visual Studio Code. And you just, all you need to do is do open folder and navigate to the folder that you had created earlier with AirSkype repository. Select folder, don't save, open that up. And then here's the whole repository. Everyone here kind of does most of their development entirely within this window. So the fact you can, you don't even have to open up Visual Studio. You can run and debug here. You can build the game inside this terminal and run all of the windows as needed here. But as a quick overview, as I mentioned before, inside if you are familiar with the contribute listing, the languages that make up the Land Stand Boat and Air Sky Boat repository are Lua, SQL, and C++. And you can see over here we have different folders. The Lua land mostly is going to be here in this scripts folder. So this is going to have all of the monsters, all the battlefields, all the missions, the quests, all the NPCs. Everything is living within this scripts folder. Um, generally, you're going to find the zones and down here you, you can find the individual zone where the monster or the NPC is uh, based in. And you'll find a Lua specifically for that mob or that NPC inside here that controls any kind of special logic or how the NPC talks to you. But generally also for quested missions, you can find that here as well. This is in the, in the middle of the progress of being converted over from those zone files into a master missions and quests uh, listing, I guess I'll say. And below that, you'll see a self-described SQL folder. This is going to have all of the monster stats, the NPC's spawn location, lots and lots of different things. Anything to do with your character, the account information, fishing, just lots of different things inside this. So I recommend if you can just to take a look and familiarize yourself. But we are also going to plan on having a session in the future where we go over how to code a monster or how to code an NPC and that will deal with going into more depth on each of these files. And to finish it off, let me collapse this SQL file folder again. And the last one is going to be the source folder. This is where you're going to find all of the C++ code. This is going to be the nuts and bolts of the login server, the uh, mob logic, the kind of the mob AI, how the mobs path, uh, lots of kind of just how the base server runs. And of course, you can take a look over the tools folder with lots of different tools in here to help with running a server mostly. Or for us, cha Generate Changelog gives us a list of all the recent changes that have been done to Air Sky Boat or Land Sand Boat recently. Well, I hope that was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to post in the Air Sky Boat Discord, and thanks for watching!